is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. Hey guys, doing? Come on in, sit down, relax. You're about to listen to the Art of Wrestling, professional wrestling podcast, the life podcast, personal journal, and intro way to the minds and souls, the hearts and lives of people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I am jet lag. I am jet lagged. I am also jet lag. It's a new nickname I'm giving myself. Limpy. That's another nickname I should be giving myself. Pine Boy. That's a nickname that my friend Sukasa in Japanese gave me. Because of the amount of pineapple I ate at a sizzler once while dining out with him and his beautiful wife, Norika. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler. And I am sitting here live in my studio, apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before I go any further, this is a fan support and listener support podcast supported by people just like you. Give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. ColtCommitted.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend. Let somebody know. Tweet it out. Facebook it out. Best way that you can support, though, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com. T-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads, the Wrestling Road Diaries 1, 2, and 3, Funny Equals Money. That's available at ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com. And it's a good thing that I bring up my friend Sue Casa, who is a great friend of mine. I met him, well, dare I say I met him through Chris Hero. This sounds like a Jade date of some sort, but not Jewish date, Japanese date. Because, of course, I will be going to Japan this week to debut with the DDT wrestling promotion over in Japan. Became friends with Sukasa through Chris Hero, but I actually had dinner with him at Denny's in uh, 2006. My very first tour of Japan for Zero One Max. And that's a cool thing to look back is that this will be the third wrestling promotion in Japan that I have worked for. Kind of a a nice new, I guess, fresh start for those of you unfamiliar with DDT, myself a little bit included. Although in the comedy show that I do with Marty DeRosa and Brendan Burns all around the world, many of their clips are consistently shown because they are known as one of the silliest and weirdest wrestling promotions of the world. I think I will fit right in. That's where I'm going. And that's where my guest who's on the show this week currently lives for the most part. Juice Robinson was C.J. Parker, a.k.a. C.J.P. in uh, developmental professional wrestling for the WWE. He was an FCW, then turned NXT, and he was the very first wrestler who was kind of a star on NXT and then left NXT and tried to make his way in the independent wrestling world, and I think that's an important fact to know. Wasn't fired, left on good terms, asked to leave, and wanted to see if he could make it. And he'll get into all of that. He'll tell the whole story. A fascinating story. An important story. I think it's an important story for a lot of, uh, for just, I don't know, just to know. And to know that now we can see him on New Japan. You can watch him on their VOD service. You saw him wrestle Cody Rhodes at the Tokyo Dome in front of 40,000 plus people. And it's one of those stories that turned out for the better. And I've known Juice for a very long time. And we'll talk all about it very soon. As I lead you into this fun conversation. As for me, though, listen, I timed this jet lag out perfectly. Flew home Monday, didn't sleep at all Monday night, slept on the plane, got home to Chicago, then fell asleep Monday night at a reasonable time, woke up Tuesday morning at a reasonable time, done. I've conquered it. I wrestled four shows in England while I was over in the UK. One of them was for a promotion called Kamikaze Pro. Three of the matches was for a promotion called Southside Wrestling, where I will definitely be making my return later this year, as told by the promoter to me, so that makes it official. I will hold you to that. When I got home, there was a nice article from Vice Sports by uh, Mike Pellucci. Pellucci? Pellucci? We'll go with Pellucci. And the article was about comedy and wrestling. Of course, something I've covered in the Wrestling Road Diaries that you guys have, of course, seen or at least downloaded on the digital site. Comedy and wrestling, we talked about it. I, I hope I hope people got to at least read my weird views about comedy and wrestling. I only say that because while wrestling for Southside Wrestling, I had a bunch of really, really fun interactions and real, real cool moments in the wrestling itself that, of course, reassures what I'm doing, makes me think that, yeah, I am doing something special. And even when I see a lot of these guys on the show now who just fucking kill it and do these crazy things, do these amazing moves, I, I still know that I have a special place on the card And I hold a special place in a lot of the fans' hearts. And one of them was, you know, I put up this Twitter and Instagram picture of me tagging in a little kid. 
He had a sign that said, tag me. I tagged him. I don't think he expected it. I said, hey, get in there and go get him. And he just ran in so fast. And it was so fun. It was such a cute moment. It was just a thing I did on the spur of the moment. You could tell the father loved it and everyone around him loved it. And then, you know, I did the match and then I got to the back. And I just remember thinking that that kid will never forget that for the rest of his life. And that was like the first thought that came to my mind. Not did I have a good match? Not did I have a bad match? What did I do wrong? But I just thought to my, and I chuckled to myself that I know that that kid will never forget that. And I was trying to think like the dad's view on it. Because I remember I was too young, but my parents brought my brother and I to the Harlem Globetrotters as a kid. And I guess they poured confetti on my brother's head. And it's something that we still talk about. And I don't know if like, I, I just, it's hard for me to understand how, the adult views it. I'm not really sure, but I'm sure it's going to be a, hopefully a story that they tell for a long time. The video is there. I probably sold one more DVD for the company. You're welcome, Southside. Because of course they got to have that footage. Show the family come Christmas. And to me, that's kind of, I guess, what it's all about. Like, if I can make a moment where somebody never forgets it, and let's say I've had 3,000 matches, that's 3,000 moments, and I do know that the pressure of not being on televised wrestling, the idea that I'm just at a little, small hall show, there is no, there is nothing in me that says you can't go off script, you can't do anything else. I realize, yes, like, probably in a perfect world, I'd love to be this giant television huge star, but I can't do this kind of stuff. If that's the fact on a television show or whatever it might be, or even if there's agents or producers or, you know, a giant boss like man with a presence over me, scaring me into what I can and can't do. I just do what I want to do. I feel the decisions I make are the correct ones for the most part. And that's not saying like I'm just saying this argument for the stuff that I'm doing. I get it. I've justified it to myself and I love it mainly because I know that kid loved it because he seemed to have the time of his life. And then the next day, we did a strip tease in the middle of the ring for the promoter's wife's birthday. But that's just, you know, a regular day at the wrestling show. All right, we do have a song of the week this week, and it's brought to you by Blue Apron. Hey, guys, let's start cooking from home. It's less than 10 bucks a meal per person, so when you do the math, it makes all the sense in the world, financially at the least. On top of a cheaper meal option, you're cooking with fresh, high-quality ingredients. Not all ingredients are created equal, people. That's why it's important to know where your food comes from. Blue Apron delivers easy-to-follow recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients courtesy of over 150 local farms, ranches, and fisheries across the U.S. right to your door. Exact ingredients means no food waste. Home-cooked meals in 40 minutes or less. Let's see what they got in store this February. Cashew chicken stir-fry with tango mandarins and jasmine rice. Udon noodle soup with miso and soft-boiled eggs. Rose pork with apples, walnut, and farro salad. And crispy barramundi with quinoa and roasted carrot salad. Remember, the more exotic it sounds, the better it tastes. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash cult. Feel like a real adult and make delicious home-cooked meals. Go to blueapron.com slash cult. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. All right, the song this week is suggested by Scott DiMaderos. And you can suggest a song, too. Email is probably the best way to send it over. I know we did a Randy Savage song last week, but Juice is obviously very influenced by him, too. And people just tend to make awesome Randy Savage songs. This one is sang by Mega Ran, and Mega Ran is awesome, too. He's got tons of cool wrestling songs. Follow him on Twitter, at Mega Ran. His site, MegaRan.com, and his SoundCloud, Mega Ran Music. This one's called The Madness. Enjoy, and we'll be back with Juice Robinson. Hey, guys, we're also brought to you this week by Harry's. That's razor blades. Hey, we're in an Internet revolution, so stop going to the store and buying overpriced blades. Go to harrys.com and get high-quality blades at a better value. How can this be, you ask? With giant question marks. Easy. Jeff and Andy, they're two dudes. They hated getting ripped off, so they went to Germany, they bought a factory, and then they started the company Harry's. Then they cut out the middleman, took less of a profit, and now Harry's offers blades at half the price. Two bucks a blade at Harry's, four bucks or more at the drugstores. What do you get with Harry's? Everything you need for a close, comfortable shave. Weighted ergonomic handle, five precision engineer blades with loop strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel, and even a travel blade cover. Harry's is so confident in the quality of their blades, they want you to try their shave set for free. That's right, you heard that right. Free. Just cover the shipping when you sign up. Plus, as a special offer to Art of Wrestling fans, go to harrys.com, enter the code wrestling at checkout, Get a free post-shave ball. Go get a great shave at harrys.com and use that code COLT. 
I was watching your match with Marty Skrull, like you said. You wrestled Marty Skrull. And uh, I one of the things I like, and I think that fans like, is like the diversity of wrestling matches. Of like people just from like different places. I don't know. Like I, I just love the idea that like Ring of Honor or I guess I mean people started bringing Marty over, but like it's like this British guy versus this other guy who's in Japan, who people knew from like who was in developmental, but now is in Japan, but is now kind of doing like just a variety of like it was just nice to see. And like was that probably the first time you ever met Marty? First time, yeah. First time we I met. First time we touched. Right. Yeah. And you touched. We done. touched. <laughs> we did touch. <laughs> first time. I don't know. Just seeing you two, like the diversification of uh, that match, which probably would I would have never seen. And I enjoyed like, uh, and I said you guys had a good match. I like. Yeah, match. thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, you never, you didn't meet Marty over there. No, he's a guy I've always heard of, yeah. and I've, I knew he was good, you know, but I never got to. Uh, I never really saw him work until a couple until, you, until so you got chicken wing. Did you <laughs> did you scout your opponent? I did. I, gotta, I did watch some stuff on him because I, I wanted to make sure. I, I, so <laughs> you want to know gonna, what you're walking into, right? Yeah, I, but there's almost been a point where I. I don't. I don't know if you're at that point where you stop, like, oh, like knowing who you're gonna work, and then watching their matches. Uh, well, normally, no, but I get real <laughs> nervous for Ring of Honor. Do you? Like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's very nervous because you kind of know what the Japanese audience is gonna do. You don't ever know what an American audience is gonna do. So compared to New Japan, which is well, but the first time you ever wrestled there, you're probably nervous as fuck. Oh, of course, <laughs> just on like a little sh- crappy house show. Yeah, it's so nervous. Was but it? Now- but what was the house in my? You know, I think in a lot of people's heads, and I think this is one of the reasons why New Japan is like so like hot right now. Uh, great marketing sense is like. The Americans only know about the shows in front of like 40,000 people. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's funny you say that because we always joke around when uh, like Tenzan or Kojima, Shibata or whatever, when they come to like, they do like Rev Pro, right? And then they work with these guys and they just kill them. Like yeah. they're real stiff with them because, you know, they think that's Japanese style and they're trying to be like. Who the Japanese think they're, that's Japanese style? No, no, no. The guys, like the English guys are that, the, wrestle those that are guys. wrestling these guys are like, here's my big chance. I'm in there with Tenzan and Kojima. I got to lay it in and do all this stuff. Little do they know, 90% of the shows we do, you know, you try not to, you try to work real, real light. I, they only see the shows that it's like, it's Wrestle Kingdom, Shibata versus Ishii, and they're killing each other. But that's not how they work. Yeah, and I remember seeing that match. Do you, you ever see the one uh, Kobashi versus uh, Kensuke where they chop each other for like nine and Five a half minutes? Five minutes, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and then people think that's what it is. That's there. right. Which they, they've done a great marketing job of yeah. But I remember the first time hearing, the first time I ever heard that was Ace uh, Steel went and re- worked for Noah and him telling me the idea of the ho- their, their house show. And I, it, and I remember if this was in 2006 or whatever. You know, I was 26, seven, eight years into wrestling, and I, like, couldn't believe that they, like, kind of took it easy. On yeah. Like, it blew my mind. A hundred percent. That's how I thought when I went there. I was like, oh, my God, I got to, like, but it's not that, though. Right. You got to you gotta work every night, and, you know, it's all tag matches and stuff for uh, minus the big shows, so you got to take care of everybody's got it because you got to do it again tomorrow, and you got to do it the next day, and you got to do it 20 times in a, you know, it's a, a traveling month. circus, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I find... I just love how... Yeah, everyone's got their place. And like the circus, like the lion tamer, like the whatever. Like, you know... They know what Kojima will do, and they do it. And like he, all he has to do is like like that. Is that the key to wrestling? Hundred percent. Just find out, find three things that people can repeat after you. Dude, everybody just on the house shows there. Like everybody just comes in, does their greatest hits. Yeah, like you just do hits. your whatever your like three or four thing. Then you get caught up next guy, and then you just put it. It's it's cool. Though. Plug and play. Yeah, yeah. Right. But the people, you know, you only go to. Uh, just a random country town in Japan. You're only there once or twice a year, so they're cool with it. Of course, they they, they got you. Got to see Kojima do the a hundred thousand chops in the corner, shoot him to the other corner. Ichazo Bakero, like they they're begging for I'll it. If he again. doesn't do it, Ichazo, and I don't know. You don't I think because I worked him, and I was gonna. He, he, yeah, we were gonna do a spot where like I said it, and we went over it like forty times, and yeah. I couldn't get it right. I believe it's Ichazo Bakiero or something, which is basically the equivalent of "Let's go, mother." Can we drop f bombs on this? Let's go, motherfucker. Oh, not that one. Oh, <laughs> not that f bomb. The other one though. <laughs> but it's cool because I I don't know. I was watching a match. He must have been. He was probably my age. Like he was just getting going, I think, in New Japan, and he would he did the same thing, but he would be the only one in the Tokyo Dome to yell "Ichazo Bakiero," right? 
Now he doesn't even say it. Right. He just go. He just does the pose, and then whoever's there, he always, that always is one of the biggest. If he reactions. spoke English, you'd be like, "I'm saving my voice, brother." Right? That would be the equivalent of. <laughs> but him. the people do it for him yeah. now. He got it so over. And that's it's, like the key. To, I think right. You just have to do something mm-hmm. a thousand times. And Whatever I, it is. And I think uh, the greatest example is uh, Daniel Bryan. Right. Yep. Just like. You knock it, you do it, you do it, you do it. I, like I want, I haven't really talked with him about that. I wonder if he just like knew, like I'm just gonna ram this down their fucking throats <laughs> until yep, this. Because he like you, you figure out you go. Some people, I don't know. Some people go back and they study like how to get over. Like right, there's ways to like how to get over. Like oh, I, you know, I bet Jericho was like that. Because like he he was like king of the catchphrase. He's yep. just, yeah, you're gonna get some catchphrases and then I'm the fucking king. <laughs> it's. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure you, out how to get you, over. Have you like? Do you have your? Do you have anything that they're with yet, or no? Um, well, you know, I always make sure I do like the whatever it is jab. The, yeah, I do the whatever, and then before the big like left hand, I'll yell something, and they they just want to hear a little English, a little, little curse. Like they know, they yeah. know. Oh, he's all right. I've he's, tried a couple things where like I think ene was something. Which yeah, it's like ooh, cool. Do you know what that means or no? Ine, Ine, like cool. Oh, cool. Be like cool, huh? Or something, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And like one tour, I was trying to do it like the whole time, and then I just gave up. Ne- like, Ne's like right, like yeah. hey, cool, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm. But it's it, it is totally that. Like, just do your greatest hits every night, and it's. Do those guys complain when they like go to like Rev Pro or America? And they're like, oh, these guys are gonna want to beat the shit out of me. Yeah, right. But in a, in a funny way, like oh. It's not. It doesn't piss them off, but it's like, oh god, these guys are gonna try to like prove themselves right. with me because they think like Japanese style and all this. But they the people, if you're not there, you don't really know. You have no. You just don't understand because you only see the the big the big time matches the where they guys. are laying where they're laying yeah. the lumber. Then you know. Uh, I I was thinking um, that I again I had Sammy Callahan on the show and I forgot that his name was Solomon Crow. Yeah, and I think luckily enough for you, uh, I was like trying to think like. You know, because I was thinking when I was going to put you up on the uh, the, and I was like, I for, I think I forgot what his name was. That's cool. Yeah, I'll take that as a huge compliment. Right, right. Yeah. I, now it's it's weird because you know I knew you for years as Juice. And yeah. Then, like, and obviously when you were like on TV and whatever, it was CJP, I guess. But, yeah. Like, now it's back to Juice, and it's enough where like I think it's enough where you forget maybe that like, and that obviously that's the I'm goal. Trying, I think. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, to get that. My brother always jokes with me. He's like, still, if you write your name in Google. It redirects you to C.J. Parker, like the Wikipedia or whatever. And we always joke, like, "Well, I'll know one day." I want to, you know, that's what get rid of. I what... want it to be known as, you know, Juice Rams, and that's something I did for a little while. It didn't work out past that. I don't want to be no, you know, I don't want to be known as that. Yeah. God, my God, <laughs> what a terrible. <laughs> and I just the name. <laughs> no, the terrible name. The whole thing, you know, the whole thing. Yeah, we'll get into it in a sec. Yeah. Um. Not, but anyways, I remember. And you remember, like I had, I I was so kind of excited to have you on, because like I said to you, like you're, it's so interesting to me that, I guess you were the first NXT star, like once they had their own TV and their own kind of thing, to then come back on the indies. Yeah, and I thought you were an amazing like. Yeah, you said that right away. Yeah, it Did was that scary a little bit when I said that. Well, you know, I was just kind of scared. The whole thing was kind of a scary thing. Got it. Kind of take a bet on yourself there, you know, take a gamble. Right. Luckily, I landed on my feet. Yeah, but, but did you, like, what was it in your head? Did you think, like, I'll, okay, I'll be able, I'll be like a star, or, I don't know, I'm kind of curious as uh what your thoughts going back on the Indies. It was totally, to be honest with you, I knew I was starting over. Starting. In a way, in a sense, but I was cool with that. It was, it was like, oh, please let me start over. I wanted to. Yeah, but you had, you had accustomed, not to a lifestyle, but... Um, you know, obviously the $20 that you used to get when you first started on the independence mm-hmm. as opposed to the whatever check that you get. Yep. And I remember, you know, luckily enough for me, when I was done, I was able to go back and, and get some decent money. Uh, yeah, but I, yeah, totally different. Right. Yeah. I, I always, I'm always super curious as to what these guys that then are wrestlers full time and then go back to the Indies and realizing, oh, I, maybe I, Oh, the money isn't going to come. Yeah. It's not a full, you don't open the checkbox or, oh, no. or or the post office box. And you're not just going to pro, throw a pro wrestling t shirt on it. It's not just going to be like selling like hotcakes. Like yeah. you're not going to. No, yeah, it was totally starting over. And I didn't have that much money, but I had enough money to where I could. I think, well, if I make 500 bucks a week, I, that was a goal. That you know, goal, if yeah. I could do a couple indies and sell a couple t shirts, and if I could just do $500 a week for a little while. 
get going. That's I, what you said to yourself. Yeah, I thought I could live off that and be okay. Wait, and did you did you move back home or you? No, I moved to England for a summer. Right. So, but so when once you, once you leave, I yeah I left and I kind of like. I took a month off. I went down to like Key West and like I did, did like you? an indie. Yeah, I did like an in, a couple indies. In Key West? No, no. I wish. Like, I'd be I there every week. <laughs> oh my God. If there was indies there, holy cow. Uh, I knew I had the New Japan thing coming. You so did I knew, know, yeah. yeah. When you left, did you know that? I did. I had that lined up. Great. Kind of. You got to gotta have something lined up. I don't you know? know. I mean. Yeah. Well. Well, because well, you called your own shot on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hopped on board with Dixon. Yeah. And that was cool because. You know, you wrestle, like I was getting $75 a match, but you work five, ten matches a week, so mm-hmm. that was doable for you me. You knew you had that too, or you yeah. like, or you were like, or I know, I didn't know I had that, but I knew I had New Japan coming up in the fall. Yeah. But you, I mean, you gave it a go of like, I'm going to try to see if I can be an indie star, right? Because you, you hopped up on a CZD, CZW show, or is this, you were just taking whatever you could take? I was taking yeah. kind of whatever just I could take, and I knew like CZW was something I wanted to do, you yeah. know, but I didn't think. I was banking on New Japan. Right. Uh, okay. So tell me, um, tell me about you. Uh, wh- where do we start? Where do we start? Yeah, you're you're a little bit uh, eclectic. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I think so. How would you kind describe of a, yourself? I don't know. You I'm know? kind of a weirdo, I guess. Weirdo. Maybe. Free spirit a little I don't bit. know. A little. Why would you describe me? I don't know. I'm kind of whatever. Mm. I like you know. I like wrestling. I like drinking beer, hanging out. I love being around the boys. I don't know. Yeah, wrestling's always been. But what you? So you grew up in Joliet, is that correct? a little south? Gardner. Okay. You, you. I met you in uh, Coal City, right? Coal City. I don't Remember even know that MSPW? Town. No, you worked there. MSPW for Danny Scott. Diamond, yes. Diamond Liquors. You know. You remember it? God, I feel like I remember. I think I first met in my head. I first met you, uh, like in a at a Milwaukee show for maybe for dysfunction. Yeah, that too. Yeah, you. Right. Yeah, so. Well, I met you um, before that, but you wouldn't have probably known me until then. But but even then, you were still just like just starting, just starting, just just starting. And I don't even know what. Maybe you struck up a conversation with me, or maybe I think your name was funny, or your hair was funny. I yeah, liked your hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it was definitely the hair because I had that big bleach blonde afro. And yes, shit. there it is. And then so yeah, and you start right. It's it's that point. But where, you knew you knew Martin, and you knew I told you like oh yeah I went to Truth, and right. I was around Danny's and stuff. So like I would. Yeah, you kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of always Yeah, around. I feel when I, when I, I, it's that point where you, like, you started coming out around to all of the shows. Everything. Everything. And you would always say, it always popped me, you're like, man, you're everywhere. Yeah, You always okay. said that, yeah. Nice. Which I is just, how you do it. That's how you do it. Yeah. That's what I thought, you know, you just gotta be there. And right. ho- hopefully maybe they need somebody to fucking, you know, get a, get a, <laughs> a clothesline. I'm sorry, a lariat from DJ Hyde. You, you know, you never know. You never know. Clarify, <laughs> it's not a clothesline, it's a lariat. Uh, I do remember that MSP. I mean, I remember the, doing those MSPW shows, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So they, I mean, they all kind of. But you were so you were floating around the Midwest, and I was always, I was always. Well, I was like seventeen then. God, trying man. to get. Yeah, I, think I remember. I that. was trying to get. I was trying to not get hired. I was trying to learn somebody to teach me how to wrestle. Well, and that's what stood out is that you were like, I'm an Illinois kid, and then Truth was like, Yeah, he's my trainee. I was like, But Truth, you live in Detroit, yeah, and I never understood that. Well. Uh, yeah, let's let me just tell yeah, you kind of yeah, how that yeah. went. So, so that diamond, Cole City, that's yeah. where I first saw you. And then that guy, that promoter, do you remember him at all? Danny Scott. Yes. Okay. He tried to he trained me a little. Okay. But he didn't teach me too much. And he was like, "All right, you're ready to have a match." I was not ready to have a match. Weird. But okay. you know the whole gimmick where they're like, "Yeah, you sell the tickets. We'll give you two bucks. Okay. You know, you sell all these." And I sold like thirty, forty tickets. No of shit. course. Oh yeah, all my. Fr- oh, you kidding? All my friends. You know, because I talked about being a wrestler since I was. So let's get. To before that point where you meet yeah. Danny, because I'm interested in how you meet Danny. I met Danny after this. It's Danny Scott. Danny Daniels, I'm sorry. I'm t- yeah, I'm talking about Danny Scott. I, I to, to the, the guy who's going to train you for a half a day, and then you start having yep. a match. Yep. Because he's not, it's funny, because in my head, he's not really a scam artist. He's, no. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I, yeah, I, I get what he was doing. Yeah. He, figured, he figured I'd just learn on the go, and that's what they used to do. Like, yeah, I, I probably could have learned on the go, right? on, the, on the job, but I didn't want to do it like that. Yeah. I wanted to be, like, pretty damn good, at least... Good enough. Comfortable yeah. with okay. Like I know what I'm doing. Like mm. yeah, but I didn't know shit. So you so you're you're from Cole City? I'm from ten minutes south. Which is what? what Gardner, you, okay. Illinois. Gardner, Sixteen hundred people, you would never know. That's why I tell everybody Joliet. 
most people even Chicago. A lot of people think I'm from Chicago because right. they don't. People don't know Joliet mm-hmm. really. You well, know, prisons and uh, it's next and to the Aurora. Blues brothers and the Blues Brothers. Yeah, Blues yeah. Brothers. I was gonna say Aurora, which is Wayne's World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. The car, the car stack. Yeah. Uh, okay, so just uh, a kid. What, what were you? What were you like as a kid? You know, I was. Uh, I would always get in trouble in school, of course. And now looking back, I understand why I got in trouble. I would take the class from the teacher. Like, try to make my friends laugh too much okay. and would never, like, yeah, let's learn. No way. It was performing hour, like, you know. Goofball? Just goofball. Total goofball. I got in so much Wait, trouble. Do you, I was, so, weirdly enough, this just comes to my mind, There was I was kind of like that, too, right? Mm-hmm. But then there was always always the, like, there was when the teacher was a fucking idiot, you could take it over. But, like, if there's a teacher who, like, w- then you just relaxed and you were, like, there's a couple classes where I was like, I didn't say a peep. Yeah. And I remember that one teacher talking to the other teacher and being like, uh, you know, is Colt crazy? He's like, no, he's fine. And being like, he's the worst student of all time. He's my hell. I think I caused some people some hell. And not to be like sexist or whatever, but <laughs> this sounds bad, but I clash more with female teachers for some reason. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know if the, the male teachers that I had in high school and like junior high, I don't know. I think they just like, if I did something funny, they'd laugh too. <laughs> and then they'd be like, hey, okay, now enough. And then I would kind of, but the female teachers would just sell it so big. I think that's yeah. wrestling, right? Yeah, that's, and you that's go, something we've learned. Keep doing it, right? Yeah. And that's a, a principle we've learned to this day. Yeah. Because if someone's going to sell something, well, then I'm going to keep on doing right, it. Right, right, exactly. So, you know, I had trouble in high school with that and stuff. I played sports. I played I, I played everything at first, the first two years of high school. Then I kind of settled into football because I, was, I wasn't a shitty basketball player, shitty baseball player, just terrible my friends were in it and i like it you know i like sports but but you, you uh, trained football at, is good you trained at 17 though so were you a senior or junior i tried getting going when i was a senior, when you were a senior. i had a late birthday uh i was trying to get going when i was still in high school but it's hard <coughs> it's hard to find to get going in wrestling it is i'd imagine so tell, uh res- always obsessed with wrestling always yeah uh brother and sisters uh my little brother was i uh, yeah and he, was he is he into it now do you like he's kind of he he's kind of like uh no, he's just kind of grew out of it. Everybody grows you. out of it. You know how wrestling is. Everybody grows out of it, but you don't. Right. I never grew out of it. Did you, yeah, did you try to force it on other people? I did try to force <laughs> it on my brother. I used to make him wrestle me in the backyard and shit. Oh, I meant like and your yeah, friends. Like I, I tried, but it got, it got to where it was so hot when I was like 10, 11, 12, 13 in junior high. And then it got, you know, it fell off after mm. the edit. And then it, it was, oh, this ain't cool anymore. And everybody outgrew it, but I was still wanted and you to be a wrestler. Open. So so take me through the process of like, okay, you're 17. 17. So one of the first, yeah, one of the first, I did, a, I went to a couple indie shows when I was like 15, 16, Ian Rotten shows. And then uh, 17, now I'm like, okay. But you were seeing probably some big names, no? Yeah, I saw you. I saw you, Morris, Illinois. Billy Gunn was there. I Delirious. Remember, uh, that was the show. Eddie where, Kingston, Chris Hero, all these guys. I remember Billy Gunn being at that Morris, Illinois mm-hmm. building and just being like, what am I... I remember him saying, like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> Dude, but when I went to that show, that was the first time where I was like, you know, I was like 15, 16. I was like, I could do this. Right. I could do this at this level. Right. I could do this. I could learn this and like, I don't... You know, I don't look like The Rock, but these guys don't look like The Rock either. Mm -hmm. I could do it at this level. So then I was like, all right, this can be done. Because before that, to be honest with you, I didn't really know that there was anything other than uh, like WWE and Japan. I knew you could wrestle in Japan. Then how'd you find out about the Morris Illinois show? I would do it. I was just at a Taco Bell in Morris. (laughs) And there there he was, Billy Gunn, on a little crappy 8x10 white piece of paper. Blow your mind? I was like, dude, we're going to this. Did it blow your mind? Blew it. I'd I was imagine. like, yeah, Billy Gunn, dude, huge fan. What the fuck? Is Billy he Gunn's gonna doing? be there. Oh my god, gotta go, gotta go. And uh, yeah, I went. I tried to get Ian to train me then, but he he said I had to be eighteen. Really? I was like sixteen, and now knowing Ian, I'm like, damn it, I could have yeah. been wrestling when I was fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, you should be upset. But now I'm kind of cool with it. <laughs> so you go to these shows. Go to these shows, yeah. Uh, and then, then I go to the Diamond shows. Fast forward a couple of years, yeah. Right? And uh, and you pull him aside. I pulled Danny Scott aside, and I tell him, you know, I really want to be a wrestler. I'm going to be 18. Like I was, I thought, I thought you had to be 18. Right. He's like, oh yeah, no problem. Come back next month, March. I'll set up the ring, and there. Then I was like, holy cow, I'm going to get to do this. And, you know, he taught me how to like bump a couple real, like do a drop kick, maybe a big hip toss. And he's like, I think you're, oh, I so think it was you're one ready. Session, then. It was nothing. It was maybe one session, maybe two. Just one show. Mm-hmm. If there was a second show, you'd have to wait another month, right? Yeah, I think it was two months. Okay. I think I did one, did another yeah. one. He's like, I think you're real close. I think you're ready. Yeah, that's. And you, what do you do when you're 17? You're like, all right. 
It's kind of, it reminds, like, when I came back to do, I came back to Chicago and I wanted to do improv. Yeah. And I remember, like, this dude, like, kind of, like, threw me into the wolves. And I was, like, remembering me, like, I know I want to do this, but, like, I don't know the fundamentals. No, dude, that was the thing. Like, the first match I had was, like, against Justin. Did we talk about it or was I talking with Silas? Justin Dean, do you remember him at all? I don't think I do. But he was pretty good. He was a pretty good wrestler. Okay. If he would have stuck with it. But I had, like, a singles match with him and it was, like, two or three minutes so I could memorize it. Right. Right? Because I didn't know these words, like, can we use these words on this? Yeah. Shine. Yeah, Yeah, shine, cut off heat. I didn't really know. I knew how matches work, but I didn't. Mm. You know what I mean? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't know. When I found, to be honest, when it's like I was really smart to wrestling, but, like, I swear as a fan, like, I didn't know anything about psychology. Like, didn't even, like, hit on me. So when I found out, like, the psychological steps of how, like, wrestling works, it, like, it kind of blew my mind a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh... So we did that. We might I might have done one more thing another month that was real short and easy to do. Mm. And then it was like, all right, now you got 20. Now I bring all my friends and family there, did right? Did you buy gear? Would you? I didn't have gear. I used a pair of like crappy uh, yellow tights, used kick pads, knee pads. Right. This looked like everybody made fun of me. It looked like Cody Rowe. Well, I looked like Punk was wearing yellow then, too. They're like, oh, yeah. It's the same gear, same, whatever. Yeah. I didn't care. And it's time to do this 20 minute like real match and I'm trying to memorize it. And they're talking about, yeah. And then, you know, kind of mom and you're you're like, wait, wait, what are you going to (laughs) do? And you know, you get out there and nervous as hell. I've messed up. And then they were, you know, they didn't hurt me or anything, but they were angry and they, you know, I think they're more angry at the fact of the matter that I shouldn't have been in there with them. Right. Should not have been angry at somebody though. Yeah. And I remember, and it was okay. Like it was fine. But I remember going to the back and I went, I went right outside, and I was, like, sitting down by this dumpster. I'd never forget. And I was so angry, I started crying. And I just, like, punched the... the Because I knew I had been had there. Maybe it wasn't his intention, but he he worked me into thinking that I was ready. I wasn't ready. This is not the way that you do this. I need to go get trained for real. And Silas Young was to, told me about Danny Daniels. Okay. So then I went to Danny's school, and he did a great job. He was a good trainer and stuff, but he didn't really have a building to train the guys. So he, I was still training like once a week, and I'm getting ready to go to ISU and stuff. And it wasn't happening quick enough. Finally, I was I was literally sitting in like an econ class. I'll never forget it. And, I, and they were talking about your life and all these things and you got a plan for your life and I'm just sitting there like dude I don't want to do this I want to wrestle yeah and I call I left all my books called my friend I'm like I'm done you quit Um, school I quit school well I dude I paid you know I was in the dorms I was there for two or three four weeks like I dropped like you know half a semester because you pay by the semester I dropped like 10 grand to just quit after two weeks but I went home got in the door my dad's like what are you doing I'm like not for I, me, Dad. I just go, I got to wrestle. And, dude, my dad was so cool. He's just like, I know. Aww. That's what he said. I never forget that. And then then I went to junior college. I hooked up with Truth Martini. Did you go to junior college in Michigan? Nope. I went to jun- Joliet Junior College. Okay. And this was, first I did the three months in Detroit. Okay, so he has a three month class. Mm-hmm. Would you would you live somewhere? Or did you drive every day? I had a I had a little money, so I uh, I moved to Detroit and I lived with whoever you I lived with a guy named Jeff Brooks, and uh, I had enough money. So what, what, were you like? Truth was like, hey, I can find you a room. Yeah, he has. If you did it when you did his school back then, you'd live with one of his former students. Gotcha. It's like I lived on like the uh, on a blow up mattress in the guy's living room wow. for three months, <laughs> and I had like a real crappy job, like making like electric generators just like stacking metal and stuff but i was happy because i knew like oh you're doing it just doing it you're i'm doing it. it now i'm yeah. now i'm in now i'm doing it. and he was truth trained me it was just me started with like three or four other guys they all quit it ended up being just me wow there so it was just like me him and the guy i live with jeff brooks one on you probably one know jeff brooks of course yeah. i know jeff yeah brooks. great guy and it was just one on tr- one training for three months so like by the time i was done there i could wrestle a match with anybody I didn't wasn't good or anything, sure. but I knew all this stuff. Like yeah. I wasn't, I was ready. You weren't. You wouldn't be embarrassed to go and have a match. Mm-mm, I wouldn't. Be right. you, this time you'd you'd be okay inviting thirty friends to watch you wrestle. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Maybe, so I, but like maybe like like a Samoa Joe would have to be like the headline, so they'd be you know. Yeah. Like you're not the main event, but oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like make sure they'll get their money's worth <laughs> on top of it, or whoever the name is. Yeah. Right. Or who, that, that they would remember X Pac or something. Right. 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 Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And X Pac will be there too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, so you'll like it, guys. <laughs> but it took a while for me to get going. Mm. I just floated around for a while. And then you, then you, you were smart. I, I, 
I don't know, smart. Did someone give you the advice of like try to get on every show, or did you pick that up yourself, or did you? You know, when I was younger, I would see um, Adam Pierce was a guy who I was lucky enough to. Um, you know, he would, would come to the steel domain later on where I trained. And as a smart mark kid in college, you know, I would always see, or in, even in high school, I'd just see his name everywhere. Yeah. And so I'd be like, oh, and so like I was glad that I was able to befriend him and he helped, you know, he helped mold my, me in my young years a lot, even though he was young at the time too. But he he was this guy going everywhere and wrestling on the East Coast, you know, with Dave Prezak and they, they were traveling all over. And I was like, that's what I want to do. So you knew to follow him around, right? I knew to, to get him with him. I knew to Went follow him around, him. but I knew to follow his path. Mm. Like, I knew, like, that's how you were going to get popular. Like, maybe it wasn't even about, like, learning the job. I knew, like, the, the popular ones, the ones, if I knew who you were. You're doing it. That was the path you are taking. So I'll, so that's the path I'll take so people will know who I am. Yeah, and yeah. I think, like, for me, that was common sense. I think that's, like, a common sense thing, isn't it? Right? Like, oh. Well, a lot of people don't wrestle they anywhere don't understand their own place. Yeah, yeah, and I never understood that. And then they, like, don't understand why they don't get anywhere. Right. Well, you gotta, you gotta do what the guys that are doing ahead of you are doing. Mm-hmm. So I knew I had to go, just wrestle. Don't worry, I wasn't getting paid. I didn't care. Whatever. You just try to wrestle anywhere you can, as much as you can. And then I remember you. We wrestled a match. I was right before you go, you went there, and I I don't know if you remember. You'll re- I think you'll remember this more than I will. Yeah, I will. It was you asked me your advice? Yo, yeah, oh, yep. Before I left. Do you remember what I said or no? You told me. Well, you kind of you had just left there, pretty I, much, right? Yeah, and you just told me. Uh, I'll tell you what I remember. What after. do you remember? Go ahead. I remember being like, you were so young, too young, and I was like, you can go, like you you can go there, or maybe you know what? Maybe the month before you were about to go to the tryout, and you were like, is this a good idea or yeah. something like that? And I was like, you can go there. And like maybe you'll go be a star, but I was like, you got to learn the job, and that's why like people will do it for like eight years, and then they'll be ready to go there. Yeah. And I was like, but like you, I guess you can't pass it up to try to get signed because then you'll learn. I almost think I said like you'll learn there, and then you'll leave, and then you'll be experienced, and then you'll be ready to go back. That's what that's what we talked about. Like I would, I knew I. I remember that part, and I was going to that tryout with the whole. I thought, "Oh no way! No way you get signed! No way are they going to sign a twenty-one-year-old kid? Yeah, no way would they sign me? They did. Well, where'd you get the money? Uh, well, I had it. It was a thousand dollars. I had right, it. I and you have to fly yourself to Florida and put yourself. Somewhere. My dad, me, and my dad drove down. You did it was cool, yeah. Aww. My dad's always been cool, yeah. Yeah, and what would he do? He just hang out? Did you get get a hotel? Well, we got we got a couple friends down there, so we wanted to go see them. And he, you know, he loves, you know, Florida. We right. want to go to Florida. Oh, okay. hell yeah, let's that go to Florida. So well. Yeah. So we went down, and I just got I got signed, which is crazy. <laughs> Who had, anybody else get signed from that camp? Um, yeah, Colin, uh, Big Cass got okay. signed. Uh, a couple guys that came and went. Uh, Big Cass is the, the most. Oh, oh Tennille, um, Al- Emma, Emma Those are the two probably most successful people that I can okay. think of. Yeah. So, but. You were a thousand dollars is a lot. What, yeah. What What was your scenario of getting like maybe? And here I'm going to put it out there, and you tell me like maybe. Okay, I'll pay this. I'll I'll learn some, but maybe I'll get on their radar. So in four years, I can get a job. That's what it was. Okay. Like I, that's exactly what my thought was. Like okay, because I, I I was wrestling Lenny Lane a lot randomly. <laughs> who's tight with Norman Smiley? Yeah. And he was holding well, my and hand. Why were you wrestling Lenny Lane? Tony Danucci. Oh, you're doing those Danucci shows. Yeah, I was going up with Armani. Yeah. Would bring would help, Armani would help me so much. Okay, and uh, he brought me up to uh, Minnesota, and I ended up Lenny Lane ended up holding my hand through a couple like fifteen, twenty, mm. like real matches. I He's asked like, Lenny to be on this, and he was like, "Dude, I hate wrestling. Wrestling sucks. I don't want to talk about it." I was like, mm. oh. "I was like, that's why you should be on here so we can yeah. talk about that." Yeah, because you don't even you talk about anything right, right, on your podcast. Yeah. yeah, I was like, "It'll be therapeutic. Like, let's talk about it." Yeah. He was like, oh. Oh, bummer. That'd yeah. be a good one. That'd Maybe be one. I can get him again. Yeah, we'll hopefully. ask him again. Uh, so, yeah, I worked I worked with him, and he was like, at that point, it was like they're hiring. They want guys that don't know much, or they don't want guys with like bad habits. They weren't hiring indie guys then. It's so funny. that, you, And you've seen a lot of the, It totally changed everything. when I was there. Yeah. It all flipped. But it was like, it was big, like, we got to get him there before he gets any bad habits. That's what he was like. Well, we won't, you know, they're going to retrain you. They're going to do it. You're going to teach you the way that they wanted you to do it. So he told Norman, and then Norman called me and was like, well, we're doing this tryout. Would would you want to do it? It's a thousand bucks or whatever. And I paid, yeah, I paid for mm. it and everything. And oh, so uh, you were kind of scouted to do the, to do the. Kind of. Yeah. A little like, they, yeah. A I mean, little. You weren't just a cold. 
No, yeah. I had a a little bit of a, fo- a foot in the door. Right. But uh, once again, I did not think I was going to get hired. Mm-hmm. And then what I ended up getting getting me hired was so this is such a crazy thing. I told this to uh, Sammy Zane, and he threw the car. We were on. <laughs> we were in full going down like. A highway. I'm so excited because I I could barely I barely heard what you told him. <laughs> I didn't even say Dan, anything. And I, I'm picturing him doing something right now. Because <laughs> you know how batshit crazy he can yeah. be. You know, it's not like a it's not a huge highway, but it's a busy street. It's got stoplights, right? Um, he we were at a stoplight. It had turned green, yeah. and I told him this story, which I'll tell in a second. Yeah. And he threw the car in park. He got out of the car <laughs> and he looked up to like the heavens. I would describe it, and just was like, yeah. <laughs> And like let out like a giant scream and got it. I was like, oh, that was your your brain was shut off, but your heart wanted to be a pro wrestler. And and then you know, and then he went to some weird Buddhas, but, yeah, right, said, or whatever. But he loved it. And then like the story was, I was wrestling this guy, and he gave me just an arm ringer, like face bump mm-hmm. thing. And he, but he pulled me down so hard, and I'm left handed. So I think when I take like front bumps, you know, I might. Have need that left hand, mm. and he just pulled me down. I didn't get my right hand up, knocked me out cold, like down, head hit the mat, out. Like you could see the in the replay, like we watched a bad course popping, <laughs> like the death jiggle in my hamstrings. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, like God. this guy is out yeah. instantly. It wasn't like out on my feet. No, out cold, sleeping, snoring. Even <laughs> the dude's like trying to kick me and stuff. All of a sudden, like Steve Kern, Dr. Tom, Joey Mercury, they all shoot. This is, I don't remember any of this, of course. They all shoot in. And the next thing I remember is like, I'm coming to, and it's like, I got Joey Mercury, Dr. Tom, Norman Smiley, Steve Kern. All their heads are like, you know, right around me. And apparently, what I said was, cover me, cover me. (laughs) And they thought that was so cool. They thought that was like, Oh, that's the kind of guy we want. You woke up, you, you're and like, I was just thinking, to protect this match. Yeah. yeah, and I guess that is kind of cool. Sure. And I don't remember any of that, but that was what. So the real story is: is there was a lawsuit there? And they, yeah, they had now, to yeah, yeah, that's a real story. I held that little carrot, you know, Let's over there. They're like, this dude's better hire me. Yeah, you yeah. guys, you know, CTE man. Yeah, right. I'm definitely getting it now. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, but, it's right there that you you won him over, huh? Yeah, I just won him over, you and know. like a person to person thing. Not nothing with. Trust me, I didn't go there like and blow any away, one away with like. I was in okay shape. I got blown up like everybody else. Mm-hmm. I had the same matches. Everybody else cut the same promo. Everyone else did, but that was the thing that they were like, "This kid's." Now, when you cut the same promo cool. that everyone else did, did you know that it was just like? Were you of like I'm just trying to get through this promo, or like you thought this promo would like knock their socks off? No, I was just trying to get through it. I was so nervous, dude. I was so nervous. Dusty Rhodes, you kidding me? Yeah. Got to cut a promo in front of him. At that point, I wasn't comfortable doing anything in wrestling. Still, right. I'd only been working like Barely two years. Barely taking your shirt off and, and wearing yeah. skimpies. Right? Yeah, dude, you're still all. So yeah, I just tried to get through it and cut like a generic whatever promo, and Dusty was like, "Okay, baby, that was okay, but." And I can't do an impression, so I'm not. But everybody can, but I can't. We'll he's like, me. just tell me what you did. And then he's like, well, tell me What'd what you, you have did. for dinner, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just talk to me a little. Yeah, yeah. And then like I relaxed a little, but it was nothing, dude. I didn't do anything to impress anybody there. Just that. Just that. You never know what's going to come yeah. out of it. And then at the end, they were like, me and Emma got hired. And I was like, what? The? <laughs> I just had rolled my car. I had, that was like my last thousand bucks. Like, what do you mean you rolled your car? You got in an accident? Yeah, I was, uh, so I was riding up to do, uh, for truth, I was riding up to do, uh, he, he's like, hey, you should come up and do this like music video for ICP, Insane Clown Posse. It might be kind of cool. They run shows, and if you're around, maybe it'll get you another booking or mm-hmm. whatever. So I went, and I did, they did, it took hours and hours to do this, uh, music video for this song it was to the cheers theme song like you know sometimes you want to go where everybody and then it's like does cocaine yeah i've heard that song and then it like breaks down <laughs> and they got like you know that'll be good a, for your career yeah, yeah well, whatever i did it i was in it for like i don't even think i was in it the other security guy was in it for like two seconds or whatever it was a total waste of time i shouldn't have done it <laughs> when i was driving back it was just on 94 you know how that can be in the mm-hmm. winter it was and i just you know Got pulled off a little on the one side, tried to get back, and then, you know, you're fucked. Did you roll your car? I rolled it, yeah. Meaning, like, you flipped it over at Tavi Jolly? Down in the ditch, like, ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. And I was like, I was good. You were good. I was fine. Did you I landed my the- seatbelt, <laughs> took a bump onto the ceiling because I was upside, you were upside down. upside down. Rolled my window down. Yeah, that's my biggest Dug fear. out. I was all- in shorts, oh like, not God. dressed to, like, 
be out in the elements. Not dressed to be rolled over in your car and no. <laughs> sitting on the hot side of the house. All these people came and like everybody like you turned and came and saw me. I was like, fuck, yeah, like dude, dude, that was crazy. Because that's shit. happened a couple times where I veered out and I'd be like, oh God. And like, and luckily, like, I mean, it's a couple times, but never like. Dude, months. I needed to do that. You got to appreciate Mother Nature. Man. Right. <laughs> you got to have respect for that. Yeah. If it's icy, man, I'm going. I don't care. I'll go 30. You're, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. going to crash yep. ever again. Right. You right. can learn, you know. Yeah, I agree with that. But yeah, so I didn't have a car. <laughs> Didn't have anything. Dad brought me down there, and you know it worked out. And so great, you you go through the system. You're getting trained. I'm sure, like every day is amazing for you. It was great. Two years, awesome with Dr. Tom Pritchard. I felt good. I was working more than I ever had. Mm-hmm. I was learning. It was a great place for for the first few years. I right. was having a lot of fun, and I was getting better. And I was learning how to work. Mm-hmm. That's where I, I was learning how to work there. And, and I mean, you. So in the beginning of this, you were like, uh, you know, it wasn't for me. Almost. Is that what you said? I don't want to put words after. What, what do you mean? Just well, that, that place. I eventually hit you. you oh, I eventually, yeah. On. This is not the first two years. Now I'm like, this is going good. Right. I'm 22, 23. I'm learning how to work. I'm wrestling all these guys. I had, you know, Colby was down there. Ambrose, or sorry, Seth, Seth Ambrose. Rollins, yeah. A lot of the guys were there. Uh, Cesaro was eventually there. The boys were awesome. It was really good. Everything was going the right way, and then, uh, and you know, we were doing TVs then in that little bitty thing in FCW with one camera, and it was nothing. That was easy, and I felt like I was getting better, and then eventually, you know, Dr. Tom out, new guy in, and then it kind of just totally all changed. So that was the, okay. Uh, yeah, so take me through uh, the decision of being like, I have to go, because it's a it's a hard one, and I commend, Huge. I commend you know, you... And, and Sammy and the other ones because, and you know, I told Sammy I was like I don't know if I would do it. Uh, just it's because like you think that maybe that something will eventually come for you or like that's where we've tried to go or that's what we're trying to like. That's the goal is to yeah. be there. Well, it would just you know it would be. So then we started doing XT and I was doing that CJ Parker character mm-hmm. and stuff and you know you just try to do as good as you can with whatever. Oh, you guys are excited about this and you have ideas for it. Well, who would I be to not try to do a good job for this, right? But eventually, you know, that guy just became what he was, a guy just to come out and put over people. Right. And I felt like, oh, man. And all these guys were coming in, right? Sami Zayn came in, Kevin Owens came in, uh, Prince David came in, all these guys, Pac, they all came in and instantly went above me, Mm -hmm. which they should have, 100%. But they had things that I wasn't ever going to learn in the PC. Like, they had... Outside experience. They were great wrestlers, you know, for 10 years on the outside. Were you, I feel that there's not a lot of people that thought that Mm-mm. the way that you write. <laughs> like, you you can say that they no. have stuff that I can't learn there, but I feel everyone else was probably like, a lot I of know, the, right? Yep. Yeah. A lot of the guys would be angry or bitter and be like, this is blah, 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 blah. I didn't look at it like that. Mm. I looked at it as like, oh, this. So now it's, things are kind of changing. You got to be able to. I knew then I was like, then I would tell guys like, I think I'm going to. I gotta go out and do that if yeah, I ever want to have a chance. But and no one be pulls like, that string though, like. And I, dude, I, it was a year thing where I'd say it every once in a while, and they'd be like, "No, no, no," and things were doing okay, and then things were getting, and I was getting in trouble at the PC. All, you know, I get in trouble all the time. Me and Billy Gunn got in so much trouble right. there. We would just start joking around, having like brother matches, like walk around like old. You give Fritch me like a stone cold stunner, okay. yeah. I'd like come in and come in the ring while he's teaching class, and he give me a stunner. And everybody, <laughs> just having fun when yeah. you're there every day. Oh my god, I don't know why I shouldn't have gotten so much trouble, but uh, I was just trying to have for some what fun. you did, or you shouldn't have done the silliness that you both. Did. Okay. But they overreacted, sure, all the time. When it becomes a militant place, yeah, it became well, very militant, yeah. and I not good with that. Right, I am not. That's not how I. You and I both. I yeah. can't do it. I'm just not that. Especially I don't respond this, to that. This industry that's just built on mm. two-year-olds wrestling for a living. <laughs> like Dude, all... It's so silly what we're doing. And then to make it that serious, and like, there's so many stories I could tell you. Like one time I used to do this thing, like where I'd like spread my lats, right, and like walk around, like before, <laughs> just joking around. And yeah. I would do it all the time in practice. Well, I started doing the matches, and like it was funny. Like it would get. I was a heel, like a dumbass heel. Yep. Oh my god, the character I was doing. Are you kidding me? Why wouldn't that guy think he's the coolest guy in the world and spread his lats and power walk around only to put the baby face up next for a fuck? You right? right? No problem. That was a problem for some people. Wow. It's funny well, you say that. Take I, this seriously. I did the same thing. No, I do take this seriously. I have a story of me dressing up as Dan Severn to wrestle a guy 
and I painted a mustache with Kazarni's uh, eyeliner. Yeah. It's just like, well, I'm not. We'll just do a trial match. I might as well have fun. Yep. And be a goofball. I'm still healed at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. Hundred percent. And that a lot of I think it's changed now, but for a while that shit didn't fly. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I refuse to believe that. I think wrestling is supposed to be fun. Of course. And uh, of course. And that's what you hear. about. You got to try stuff. Like. Not saying the last spreads like the people's elbow, but Billy and Sue, he's like, dude, do all that. Do anything you want when you're out there. You kidding me? And then he told me the story of The Rock was joking around. They were trying to pop each other, and he did the people's elbow. Not saying that the last spread was anything like that. Is that the story? I don't know the story. But, but uh, yeah, they were joking around at a house show, apparently, and he would do that on mm-hmm. the house shows. And then it became right. the thing that he did, yep. that he put into his act. Yeah. So, I don't know. That his best, it became part of his best stuff. <laughs> yeah, his greatest hits. His greatest hits, his, yeah. One of his greatest hits. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and because you do hear that, like, you know, and I would hear from Carl Anderson, and, and like, and you just hear that, like, New Japan is such a, a, a fun, festive, no... Uh, oh, yeah, New Japan, anything goes. And right? because, right, the, the, that environment, I was there, the WWE one is, is the pins and needles and walking on eggshells, and of course you want, you, it's just like you pray, it's almost like when I was there, and I, maybe the same for you, it's like you pray for the time where it's just, you you're able, back when you were on the indies where it was just fun, you pray oh, like, you're like, right, you're like, but what But I didn't even really know that. Fair enough. Hero would always tell me that. Yeah. He'd be like, man, you don't even really know what it's like to just kind of just be a goofball. Yeah, but go out there and still work hard and have a good match. And I didn't. I never had a good, really good match before I went. You know, I went there way too young. Looking back now, it's okay. But, but so yeah, t- eventually I was like, yeah. Tell me about the who did you give someone a call? Did you talk to someone? Eventually, I told. Uh, how'd you pull? The, how'd you pull the trigger? I knew. I knew I was done right before. Uh, whatever, wherever the WrestleMania was in San Francisco or San, San Jose. San Jose. I knew okay, I'm um, I gotta go now. I'm gonna either. I figured I'd just hang around and get fired. They did the first NXT special in like a big arena, and I wasn't on it. That was, and it. I took it personally. Right, okay. Because I'm on all the fucking. I was on all the TVs putting people over. You'd think I'd come out. It would have been fine if I would have came out and got put somebody over. Sure, but I did wasn't on it, and I was so so angry. And I made up my mind right there. I, I'm done. Mm. I'm out. I'm gonna figure it out. And then I told, uh, I pulled uh, Bernard Baldo aside, and I told him, "That's you know." He's like, "Are you sure?" Okay, and he goes, "All right." And luckily, they were uh, inducting Tatsumi Fujinami into the Hall of Fame, so like Tiger Tori and a lot of the New Japan guys were there. And I was doing all these access matches, and at that time, I had already knew I was go- leaving. Right? So you was farting around. I was farting around, <laughs> calling my cutting promos like. I was doing the environmental thing, but then I just turned into like call myself Mr. WrestleMania Access and shit. Mm-hmm. Say I was undefeated, even though I lost twice. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I lost once in the morning, once at noon, and then here I am in the afternoon about to lose again, but just having fun. And uh, they saw me, but uh, I'm glad they didn't tell me they were watching before I went out there because sure. I was just acting like a joke. Shawn Michaels was like over doing a, <laughs> you know, 50 meter, 50 yards away doing an autograph signing. So I, of course. Went for the sweet chin music, pointed to the WrestleManias. I was just being silly, but Atori thought it was good. And of course, Baldo and Fergal were there. Like this guy's a good guy, you know. He's you good. Look, take, take a look at this guy, right? Yeah. yeah. And then when I came back, they just said, "Would you want to come to the dojo?" Hundred percent. That's amazing. And you became a dojo guy. But the, I wasn't gonna be originally. Originally, I was just gonna go straight to the dome and or the hotel. Straight to the dome and straight to the ho- <laughs> yeah. debut in the main event. <laughs> but straight straight to just getting flown back and forth. Right. But I was like, ah, uh, I don't. If I want, I wanted it to stick. I don't want to be a New Japan guy. And you saw, and Fergal had came in to developmental, so you probably had a relationship, and you saw yep. what where he came from and mm-hmm. what he did, right? And I thought, if I'm gonna go there. I don't want to just right away be going back and forth. That's not how you earn respect. Mm-hmm. I got to start over. So I asked if I could stay in the dojo. And Atori, pops, he pops me still. He's like, you sure, man? You sure you want to stay in the dojo? You want? And I was like, yeah, I, wanna, I want to. And I, I, yeah, I ended up being there for eight months. And no shit. it was good. I'm glad I did that. Because, you know, then you earn their respect. Mm-hmm. The, I, didn't, I didn't want them to think that I thought that I was something that I wasn't. Mm-hmm. I wasn't anything because you're not anything. And, and at that point, and I, I was nothing. Anybody who leaves there and thinks like, oh, I'm going to cash in on all these indie paydays and like put my pro wrestling tees and everything. No way. You're starting over. You're nothing. You're behind the machine. And yeah, don't drink the Kool-Aid. It was nothing then. Mm. And uh, yeah, I went to the dojo and started from scratch. And I knew then I'd get a couple more 
couple more tours, right? So if I shit the bed the first tour, I knew I'd have a couple more. Because you were going to be there in the dojo, right? Fair mm-hmm. enough. That's a smart plan. <laughs> and Save them money. I knew I could win them over. I figured I could win them over in three months. Three, yeah. Maybe not one week or one month of, you know. Yeah. I just thought, I thought it was the best thing to yeah. do. And earn the respect of the liar. Oh, he, yeah, he was doing that NXT WWE stuff, but he came in here, started over, and I was going to shave my head and do it all. I was going to shave my head, go back to black trunks, black boots, and really, really start over, but they told me pretty quick, you don't need to do that. I mean, they knew pretty quick, oh, well, you can wrestle. So. Right. I was in the dojo, and I trained with them and stuff, but they you know, they took it easy, a little, they took they it did. easy on me. Yeah, so you did. They all did. the shit, though. Yeah, right? I did do all, all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Sacking it at all, like the main, like last year, Wrestle Kingdom, the whole show, just out there in my jumpsuit, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. It was, because I, I, since I started New Japan, I've always just felt like it's how it should be in wrestling, like, you're working hard, you're doing better, you are, and they're seeing it, and you're doing, you're moving up slowly, not fast. It's about slow. It's not like, okay, here he is. All right, put him out on TV. Oh, didn't get over in two weeks. Well, now you're a jobber. No way. They get it there. It's a slow burn, the slow climb. It's the best place in the world. And I love it. It's great. Like, this is, in a perfect world, it could be. This is 20, this is 20 years for you. You can put in 20 years there, yep. right? Yeah. Do you feel that way, or do you I want to work there forever. It's funny, uh... Sometimes my friends will be like, when are you coming back? And I'm always like, I don't know how to answer that. Because I would, if I was just going to answer it, it'd be like, I'm not. But you know, you never know. Do you envision, how do you envision your life? Do you envision like meeting a Japanese wife or like, you know? Uh, you know, that's probably going to happen because I want to find a girlfriend. I'm, I'm tired of just like floating around, just living the existence I live right now is pretty like. You know, right. we don't need to get into details. Right, but, but I'm saying, start to feel pretty, pretty shallow about <laughs> you and your relationship with women. I would like a girlfriend, and if I have one, it's not going to be here because I'm there 80 percent of the time. That's so it's going to be a girl. It's going to be a girl in Japan, mm-hmm. probably. Well, I hear that's that's how you learn Japanese. Yep, they teach that's, you what, Japanese. They yeah, that's do, what they say. Yeah, that's what they do. You know Japanese? You know, I know about. I got about 20, 20 words I can throw out, Decent. but I don't because you know I tell I tell my family this all the time because they're always like, they just assume oh. <laughs> they they assume that they don't speak any English, right? And they assume that oh, you got to learn Jap- you must have to learn Japanese just to be able to survive. No, what? And actually, in all actuality, I'm getting pretty damn good at broken English because all the Japanese wrestlers enough broken English can yeah they got they all come here for their excursions so they can all speak English, mm. but it's broken and very like. Like, I don't know, second grade, first grade level, not even. Oh. Well, I don't know. I don't want to. Well, Kojima is basically a third grader. Yeah, those tweets yeah. he's been putting out recently. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> he likes he, ice cream. He, oh, he loves ice cream. I thought the God. Is that what you're going to talk oh, about? Oh, my yeah. God. He loves. Oh, there's so many fucking cool things we can talk about with that. But yeah, you just get good at your broken English. You don't need Japanese. Perfect. I need it. I want to learn That's it. That's a lesson for anyone who wants to eventually wrestle in Japan. And just I, talk slow, easy it, words, it, anything. <laughs> get rid of the article any of the bull crap don't try to the hard words yeah right? yeah yeah don't throw any adverbs in there don't, don't try to, any good adjectives throw them out well i think it's i think it's a good success story like i said i wanted to have you on and i think it's fun that it's how long have you been gone from there now um i left april 2015 so almost two years so it's taken two years for you to come on yeah and in that two years it went from like oh i wanted to see how you would survive in the Indies to like, what a great success story this has has become. Thanks, man. And we'll, you know, obviously it's kind of just a start, right? Yeah, Yeah. just getting going. But I landed, I think I landed on my feet. I survived the hard part. Now I've got a place that I work, you know, I got to do this, which was huge for me. It's going okay. I think I'll be okay, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Where are you at on the internet? I'm on, uh, where am I? Both Instagram and Twitter is at, Underscore Juice Robinson underscore because there's a lot of Juice Robinson. Is there? Inside, uh, apparently, a lot of hip hop artists and that makes stuff sense. like that. that makes <laughs> That's sense. a common name out there on social media. And anything else? You got a person T star? Do you? Uh no, I don't. I don't think. I don't. think I do, but I don't know what it is. Okay. Yeah, I. You know, my pro wrestling T store is basically. I'm able to get Netflix for free. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> it goes right into my PayPal. You have enough, sure. <laughs> I've need... got my Netflix hooked up. I haven't paid for Netflix for <laughs> perfect. You need yeah. two shirts of uh, But I do have one. I, I don't know what it is. Okay. But, yeah. And that's just Twitter and Instagram is mainly what you're floating on? Yep. Yeah. Um, cool. And uh, just off to Japan, and you're yep. just going to spend a bunch of time over there? And... Yeah, I'm there all the time. Got here yesterday, going back tomorrow. Crazy. I'm there all the time. Crazy. It's cool though. It's a good I life, love it. man. Thanks, man. Thanks for. I'm glad we got to do this. I'm glad we did it 
two years a year two I years too. later. Yeah. What would we have talked about? I might have been bitter or angry. Right. And you said that too. I don't know if I was angry. I don't think I was ever angry or bitter because it was kind of my my call to right. I wasn't hot about it. But like I don't want the whole conversation to be like No. You know what I'm saying? It's better. This is so much yeah, better. Yeah, 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 yeah we yeah. have to see like yeah. We didn't know where it was going. No, yeah. it's, it's going okay, but it's just starting, you're right. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for, for having around. me, dude. Oh, but we said at the same time. One, two, three. Thanks, Thanks for having me, brother. Eye. Okay. <laughs> Uh, like I said, a, a nice feel-good story. Juice Robinson on the podcast, doing great in Japan. Hopes to be there forever. Forever. Wants to be there forever. Which is another inspiration that the wrestling promotion of WWE isn't the end-all, be-all for everybody. I know. We grew up watching it, and the goal is to go there. But there's so much success out there outside of that company and for People like myself, it means the world. It means the world we're able to make a living somewhere else doing something else by the people who uh, who aren't interested in us. And who knows? You know, Juice will become a big star over there, and maybe they'll be interested in him, and maybe he'll go, and maybe he won't. But the cool thing is, uh, right now, that's kind of his choice. Thanks for being on, buddy. Let's get out of here. Before we do, let's get into some plugs and... Upcoming events... All right, the best way that you can support ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, Twitter and Instagram at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash AOW Podcast, also slash Colt Cabana. My storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus all the past archives of The Art of Wrestling are ad-free, and they're on Howl.fm. Use the code Colt, get a free month. ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe your promoter won't put me on your upcoming show or convention. YouTube channel, I got a YouTube channel. Just put up a bunch of stuff, including a free match with Zack Sabre Jr. ColtCommand.com is my website. I got a P.O. box there. You can send me some snail mail. Narian sent me something. Narian Law. Rachel and Derek, they're getting married. And Jimmy James, he sent me a whole bunch of stuff. Thanks, bud. Upcoming, February 12th, 14th, and 19th in Tokyo, Japan. Sign up and watch me, ddtuniverse.com. Friday, February 24th, Portsmouth, England, revolutionprowrestling.com. Saturday and Sunday, February 25th and 26th, Preston, England, prestoncitywrestling.com. Saturday, March 4th, New York City. Friday and Saturday, March 10th and 11th, Las Vegas, Nevada, rohwrestling.com. Sunday, March 5th, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Facebook slash United Pro Wrestling KY. Saturday, March 18th, Somerville, Massachusetts, Facebook slash Beyond Wrestling. Friday, March 24th, Cleveland, Ohio, AIWrestling.com. Saturday, March 25th, Windsor, Canada, BorderCityWrestling.com. Sunday, March 26th, London, Ontario, Canada, Smash-Wrestling.com. I love the way that sounds. March 29th through April 1st, Orlando, Florida, WrestleCon.com. Wednesday, March 29th, Orlando, Florida, AtomicWrestlingFL.com. Thursday, March 30th, Orlando, Florida, WrestleProOnline.com. And during the day, at 4 o'clock, I'm going to be doing a live podcast with Larry Zabisco. It's going to be very limited in seats. It's not going to be like a live show. It's just going to be a one-on-one podcast with me and Larry. And you guys get to sit in on it. That's at the Team Vision Dojo. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'm going to be at WrestleCon.com all day long. I'll be doing two live podcasts during the afternoon. Please come down. Please say hello. It's going to be a great time. That is the show for this week. Thank you to you guys at home for listening. I really appreciate it. Thanks to Juice Robinson for coming on the show. Thanks to Cable Guy Jeff and Sue Stone, Kid Russell, Matt Jenkins on the music, Dane Miller with tech. Sponsors, highspots.com, hundreds of full-length titles available to download an amazing VOD service. You can see PWG, you can see $5 Wrestling. They also have AMA knee pad, gear, masks, ring. You need a wrestling ring? They got a wrestling ring. How about OneHourTees.com? They help run Pro Wrestling Crate.com. They help run Pro Wrestling Tees.com. This is the place where you can support your favorite independent wrestler by buying a T-shirt. TweakedAudio.com slash cult earbuds that I use. Get over 30% off and free shipping just because you listen to this show. And uh, that's it. I get to sneak into the apartment for uh, a day and a half, a couple days, and then I'm off to the land of the rising sun. So I got to I gotta go get ready. I got to get ready for this week. I got to get ready for this trip. I got to get ready to make some Japanese fans laugh. I'm wrestling the same guy that Joey Ryan flipped with his dick. I got to think of something I can do to top that. Nothing, right? I think 40 billion people have seen that clip. What do I do? Any suggestions? Just kidding. I don't want your suggestions, but maybe if they're good. All right. Hey, this has been The Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. What I did tonight? Yeah. I w- worked with Marty Scroll. Took a couple flatbacks. Nine minutes got blown up. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, then I had some beers. All right.